Dean Chasson may be the most prolific gay porn star you've never heard of. Chasson's career began in 1969 and was mostly over by the time every household had a VCR. In this episode, we are going to celebrate gay porn star Dean Chasson, a gay porn model who came to prominence during the late 1960s and continued his career into the 1990s before disappearing completely. This is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Before we continue, I do want to remind you to help this channel out by clicking that subscribe button if you haven't already, and selecting the bell icon for notifications to see more content like this. Very, very little is publicly known about the man whose stage name, depending on what day it is, was Dean Chasen, Dean Chasen, or Dean Chasen. So little that I debated making a video on him. It was a bit uncomfortable because every one of these videos lets me research, get to know someone, and share them again with you. We may not know a lot about Dean Chasen, but we do know that he did work with Jay Bryan a great deal in his career as well as with Falcon Studios. Chasen was a handsome, guy next door type with longish dark blonde hair and a tan. He embodied the California look, the same look that made him appealing to director Jay Bryan. With Bryan, Chasson would be the lead in his hit movie Seven in a Barn. He would go on to work with Bryan again for Male Stampede and Tuesday Morning Workout. From there, Chasson did some work with Adonis Video, but then began to work with the future industry giant Falcon Studios. Falcon's first movie was a two-part loop called Muscle, Sweat, and Brawn, which featured Dean Chasson. Chasson would go on to appear in many Falcon titles, but none was probably more infamous than Brothers, which features a younger Chasson and Greg Chasson promoted as his brother. Hey, what's doing, I'm nuts. Oh, not much, Fruit Fly. Hey, where's Goofball? Oh, he's out rounding up some of those strays. Chasson's later career brought him to Catalina Studios, where he made a string of movies, mostly solo scenes, before filming his last known scene in 1994 in Catalina Studs. The VCR explosion inspired new models to pick look-alike and sound-alike names, hoping to benefit from a Chasson coattail effect. They were so second-rate, though, that few would go on to be in another film. At this point, Dean Chasson was lost to porn posterity. What the hell? That was pretty good. Dean Chasson was one of the few models from the period to do well for himself financially, saving money from his appearances in porn and escort work and investing in real estate. I have read that by the end of the 80s, Chasson owned a vineyard in Southern California and a rental property. Dean Chasson's sounds like a genuine happy ending in an industry that can use many more. It's interesting that in an industry where today, most performers can choose to only show you or give you what they want, imagine how easy it was to disappear before the advent of the internet. If Dean Chasson is out there, alive and well, and sees this, I would love to know all as well and thank him for his contribution to gay erotic cinema. You've been watching Demons Define Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demons Define Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demons Define Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Discord. And if you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn where you can help support this channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. (laughs) 